All right. Well, welcome everybody, and uh, if please make sure that you've signed in. Uh, Tom put in the chat uh, the link and um, the referral code that you need. You might want to make note of this if you're filling this in later. Is two three SSJBT uh, for this meeting. You can also snap that uh, QR code if that's helpful with your phone. I'll leave it right there for a second. And this. Uh, this meeting is about the Stars and Stripes tour, and it also is the exact same itinerary with different dates for the Freedom Tour. Uh, the Stars and Stripes tour is going to be June 11th to the 30th, and um, this is going to be headed by two uh, head directors from other tours, the Freedom Tour and the Gold Tour. And uh, Tom, since you're on the call, why don't you introduce yourself, and then I'll introduce myself. So my name's Tom Murphy. I'm a retired middle school band director of 35 years. Uh, I actually went on this very same tour in 1982. So do the math. Uh, some of the people in the room were not born yet. That's for sure. Uh, maybe everyone. But uh, it started me on the AMA adventure. I, it changed my life. Uh, we still go back to exactly the same places in the itinerary. Um, I could tell you stories about each one. And now it's my 29th tour um, with American Music Abroad. And it's been the best thing of my career. And I've had a pretty good career. But meeting the students that I've met, taking them to places, taking them to a concentration camp, 2,500 kids, I'm very proud of all of that. Uh, you're gonna love this presentation. Keith was my one of my staff members. And then quickly, as every teacher wants, uh, he quickly surpassed me and now is a, our best uh, head director. So Keith Hodson, take it away. Thanks, Tom. And uh, <clears throat> everything Tom just said uh, about the Europe experience. Um, I uh, teach at the University of the Arts in Philadelphia. I'm a professor of music education. Um, I'm a past president of the Eastern Division for NAFME, our National Association for Music Education, and a past president of New Jersey Music Educators. Uh, I taught um, high school band for 26 years in New Jersey. Um, I'm a national board certified teacher, and this is going to be my 21st year uh, on American Music Abroad. And uh, I won't bore you with all the other details of, of my bio. Let's move on. And we will share um, the, uh, the other staff members um, who are going to be on this tour after, the, after I um, go through the itinerary. So just a quick... Uh, a recap of my experience with American Music Abroad, 22 years as a, as a director. The last 14 years, I've been a head director of, of the Gold Tour. The reason my wife, by the way, is a high school band director, and uh, she she and I are both directors on this tour. Um, she's actually senior to me. She actually went uh, two years as a student in high school and college. Uh, with me. What's that? Yeah, with, with, with Tom. With me. Yep. Uh, but the reason why we keep going year after year is that we just love showing students Europe and it does not get old. Uh, it's also a very safe, well-run tour. And I actually want to go over a list of reasons why I feel that way um, after the itinerary. Just know um, right now as a professional and the, with Tom and I, the people ultimately responsible for the safety and well-being of 150 high school students for three weeks in Europe through six countries. I know you think we're crazy. Uh, we wouldn't be doing this if um, if we weren't 100 percent convinced of how well how well run the tours are and how well crafted the itineraries and so forth. Um, normally, I say we have a lot of experienced staff and chaperones, but that's going to be only the case with Tom and I, who have a, a, almost 50 years of um, experience taking kids to Europe. However, the staff that we are bringing um, are coming from some new areas in Georgia in Tennessee in Kentucky and Louisiana. Um, who are going to be uh, new, as new as the students who are going to be on the tours. Um, so we're, we're just as excited to show them Europe as well. You know, we love seeing the students change and grow. Uh, the students are almost unrecognizable to their parents when they come home after three weeks of traveling in Europe. They, their eyes have been opened uh, to the perspective of the world and, and cultures, and they've matured and learned to take care of themselves um, for three weeks. And... Um, I think they're, they're, you're going to notice a, a, a pleasant surprise upon their return. And you know, the musical experience really changes their lives. We have experiences 
two, three, four, five hundred, six hundred people attending our concerts uh, every other night on this tour. And that kind of um, and I'm going to share some of those experiences here as we go. We go along in this presentation. Um, but a lot of people's lives have been changed uh, because of the musical. Um, I like to uh, introduce the tour in this balanced approach. First of all, it is a great, incredible travel and cultural experience. These students are going to visit literally six of the most beautiful countries in the world. That's going to be Germany and France and Switzerland and Italy and Austria and the Czech Republic. And as we're touring and visiting, we're going to be met by local tour guides that are going to uh, show us, um, you know, the beauty and the culture of their country. And um, we'll have a lot of educational information on the places that we visit as well. And, you know, it's a really a unique once in a lifetime musical opportunity. I mean, when else in your life are, are you going to have an opportunity to play with a band, sing with a choir or play with an orchestra or or, or act uh, in a, in a, with a theater troupe? And, and, and perform for European audiences. That's just not going to ever happen again in your life. It's very unique to what we do in high school. We're in band, choir. Uh, actually, there's not an orchestra on this tour. Band, choir, and theater on this tour. Um, but there is an orchestra on the Freedom Tour, since we're talking about freedom here as well. Um, so it's really a once-in-a-lifetime musical opportunity while they're uh, high school students. They're going to get a chance to now travel with 150 high school students just like them uh, from multiple states uh, performing in Europe. And when you put that many high school students together, it's bound to be a social experience. And we love that. Um, but it, again, it's about the balance. It can't be all about the social, right? Uh, or we're going to have problems. And it, it also wouldn't be very fun if it was just all about the musical. So it's the balance of all these things that really uh, I'm convinced that we, is the reason why we have highly uh, successful tours year after year after year. Um, so I love this photo. In fact, that is Tom Murphy right there conducting uh, the Gold Tour years ago. Our, all our concerts end this way. The choir and theater kids will rejoin the band uh, and we'll end our concerts with a patriotic finale. I believe we're doing America the Beautiful there. Um, that's in a, isn't that a gorgeous venue? That's an outdoor venue in Meyerhofen, Austria, and we are going to be performing there. Um, so a little bit about the tours and, and the company. This is a three-week musical tour of six European countries. Uh, the Stars and Stripes tour is, consists of a concert band, a concert choir, and a musical theater group. The Freedom Tour will have an orchestra uh, in there in place of the musical theater. Uh, we, we begin all the tours with a two-and-a-half-day uh, experience at a college. So we're going to be uh, meeting in Atlanta, in the Atlanta area. We're not sure exactly the college yet. But we are there for rehearsals and pre-tour orientation uh, and also a time to get to know a lot of kids, right? We're, we're going to make uh, 150 friends in two and a half days and uh, before we take off to Europe. That's a really important part of that experience as well. Then we're going to put on a farewell concert uh, before we leave the college. And if any parents are in the area uh, close by to come back for that uh, concert, that would be fantastic. Otherwise, we'll plan to live stream it um, so parents can see it from home. Um, we're, everything I'm talking about tonight is included on the tour, including round-trip airfare, high-quality hotels, motor coach transportation, all breakfast, all dinners, and all entrance fees uh, are included. Every evening is accounted for with planned group activities, and I'll, I'll talk about what some of those are in, in a little bit. So American Music Abroad has been traveling for 44 years. This is going to be the 45th year of travel experience. And in that time, American Music Abroad has sent over 40,000 kids to, uh, to Europe. That's a lot of kids with a lot of parents who have had a lot of questions and apprehensions and uh, considerations about sending their children abroad. It's a big decision. So the uh, idea of this meeting is to uh, give you all the information and have all your questions answered. And we want, we'll let you unmute and, and, uh, and ask any of your questions at the end that have not been answered uh, since. So the, the, again, the itinerary is just so carefully and expertly crafted, um, which again are one of the reasons why we have such successful tours. And I'll talk about that itinerary a little bit more later. Our musical staff consists of uh, public school music educators, band and choir directors. We also travel with uh, certified nurses and counselors, school counselor and the nurse. Um, as I mentioned about the tour guides that we're, we are often uh, encounter in some of the cities that we, we uh we visit. We have there. Here's a couple of pictures of some local tour guides. I see Croatia there and and Slovenia and and Paris. Um, so 
again, great, great experiences with local tour guides. All right, so let's talk about the music preparation in Atlanta. We're going to check in on Sunday, June 11th, I believe is the date. And we're going to check in and stay here for the next two and a half days. Um, like I said, making friends, having rehearsals, and having orientation sessions. Realize we have so much to go over with the kids about not only behavior and expectations, but money and bathrooms and shopping and uh, all that sort of thing. Um, and and recommendations uh, from, from experience. Uh, Tom and I uh, love to talk about our lessons learned um, and experiences from the past. Those are the kind of things we share with the kids uh, at the college. And then uh, here's some of our rehearsals. And again, the students will have name tags, uh, not only on them, uh, but on all their stands as they're in rehearsals so that we get a chance to learn a lot of names. Choir and rehearsal. And then, as I said, we're going to give a farewell concert. And then we're going to board coaches and transfer to the airport and leave out of Atlanta International Airport. Okay, taking off to Europe. This, we're going to take off to the uh, uh, east coast of the United States to a sunset. And um, we're going to take a six hour flight and land in Frankfurt, Germany. Oh, check this out. This is my favorite slide of the whole thing. Boom, there's your six hour flight. Now, it won't happen that quick, but what happens when we get up is uh, they'll serve us dinner, actually. And then after serving us dinner, they'll dim the lights and we're going to go to sleep. Uh, the next thing you know, they wake you up and they serve you breakfast and you land in Frankfurt, Germany. It's that easy. As long as you sleep. Going over. Coming back's a little different, but we'll, we won't talk about that. All right, here we go. We land in Europe. And our first experience on the ground is uh, getting lunch. The kids might do this once in a while. They won't do it very often for a couple reasons. That large Coke they order is served with no ice in it. Um, the meat tastes a little funny. And, you know, it's expensive. The fast food over there, you know, here your McDonald's would run you six, seven bucks for lunch. That would probably run you 15, 16. So the fast food is um, a lot more expensive over there. Here's a better lunch. Wiener schnitzel and palm fritz, a little more typical European. These uh, outdoor cafes are very quaint. We see them all over Europe. You're going to want to do that with your friends once in a while. But don't do that every day. You know, you could find a sitting charge on your bill. Never heard of such a thing, a sitting charge. You know, in Venice, and we're going to be in Venice, you go into a restaurant, you could see an air conditioning charge on your bill. So we'll teach the kids about some of these customs that they're uh, not used to. Um, and we'll make recommendations. Uh, but the kids will do what they want to do for lunch. Uh, it just usually involves gelati um you know there, every time we go into a little village there's always these fresh fruit and vegetable markets i love grabbing some fruit and vegetables and and uh, berries and water or some cheese and bread and walking and exploring a cobblestone village and having a nice quaint european experience rather than spending the lunch time sitting in a restaurant um bakeries get your junk food fix or some pizza we'll be in northern italy pastry shops and like I said, gelati. There's lots of gelati to be eaten in, in uh, Europe. And I think the kids do it probably three times a day, like that. I think that's what they have for lunch. But I, I always feel very comfortable. Nobody's going hungry on this tour. They're getting incredible breakfasts and they're getting incredible dinners. And so what they choose to do for lunch um, is going to be up to them. Uh, this is our home away from home. We are traveling on the Lufner Risen uh, Coach Company, at, at least uh, free... Freedom is actually on Krista Forest, different bus company. But uh, Stars and Stripes will be on Lufner Horizon. They're an Austrian coach company. These Austrian drivers, they're not bus drivers. They're coach drivers. And they are highly educated, professional men. They speak, and women, they speak five languages fluently. They're, they're always cleaning their coach, inside and out. Like you, you see them polishing the outside of their coach. Their coaches always look new, like brand new. Uh, and we're going to help them keep it clean inside for three weeks. Here's a picture of the inside of the coach. Looks like a party going on in the back. Probably somebody's birthday. Uh, here's one of the larger hotels we might stay in. This is actually, I believe, in Dresden. And uh, we stay in, in four and five star ho quality hotels. Um, here's a, a room in, in Austria for two. This is a typical um, European room. I want to point out the beds. They're they're all, in Europe, they're always these single beds, uh, even for couples pushed together. But I want to point out these separate down comforters and down pillows. 
very uh, common. We're, you're going to be sleeping on down uh, every night, and uh, you'll fall in love with it and want to bring them home. Every room has a private bath and toilet, and students might be thinking, of course, all rooms have a private bath and toilet. Not in Europe. Um, I, it's not it's not usually common. Sometimes the nearest bathroom is like down the hall, down the steps, across the rooftop, and you find some co-ed facility that you're sharing. But when we uh, are in Europe with 150 high school kids, uh, it's very important that we are in uh, facilities with private pri private bathrooms in our hotels. As I said, all breakfasts are included. You, these is just a slice of a picture of a, all the rolls, breads, croissants. You see all the jams, jellies. There's always uh, plates of meats and cheeses and bowls of fresh yogurt and, and fresh eggs. You, you'll be uh, spoiled. It's not the Continental Buffet at the... Uh, Holiday Inn Express. Uh, it is, um, spo oh, that's my breakfast. Literally, that's my breakfast one morning. Do you all recognize that brown stuff in the middle? That's Nutella. You'll have that every morning and be spoiled. All right, let's talk about the itinerary. We are landing in Frankfurt, uh, Germany, and when we are aboard the coaches, we'll stop for a lunch stop as we head west to the Rhine River. And as soon as we hit the Rhine River, uh, one of the first experiences here uh, in Europe is going to take a Rhine River cruise. So there's our cruise boat. We're going to board that for about two and a half hours down the Rhine River to Rudesheim. And we will uh, then spend some time uh, either getting lunch or dinner, whichever is uh, our, our closest to um, our, our meal. Uh, this is the view down the Rhine River on both sides and on the hillsides. You're going to see castles and churches and great German architecture and castle ruins and, uh, and slopes just covered in vineyards. The next day, we're going to visit Heidelberg, Germany. Heidelberg's an old German uh, university town. Uh, this main street here along these buildings in the picture and alongside the church is a really long shopping street. It's just all blocked off from traffic. Um, Great place to take a, a large group of kids for lunch and shopping and, and exploration. And hopefully they'll have time to come up to these castle ruins on the hillside. Uh, that, those are the gates to the, the old gates to the uh, city. But these are the castle ruins on the hillside. And it's incredible to go up there and get a great view over Heidelberg and visit the incredible wine vat that's up there. That will blow your mind. Um, we're now headed down a little further south on the Rhine, Rhine River. So the Rhine uh, separates Germany from France. And we're now crossing over to the French side. And this is the Alsatian region of France, where the famous city of Strasbourg is. If you didn't know Strasbourg, um, it's one of the capitals of Europe. Unlike Washington, the European capital rotates a third of the year from Brussels to Luxembourg City to uh, Strasbourg, France. Uh, we'll be visiting Strasbourg in the new town and also in the old town. This Alsatian region, by the way, is also where the famous Riesling wine comes from. Uh, this whole area is covered in vineyards. And we are staying in Colmar, France. Isn't that gorgeous? That's what Colmar really looks like. And we are actually staying in places that look just like this uh, in Colmar. The uh, other thing to tell you about this Alsatian region, so this used to be Germany. And then it was France, and then it was Germany, and then it was France. And that happened like six times over two, three hundred years. And every time that happened, the people were forced to change everything about their way of life, their language, their religion, their architecture. And so you will literally see French and German architecture in houses and buildings side by side with each other in, in the old town of uh, Strasbourg. You're looking at a very a French uh, uh, little hotel here. But this is um, a German half-timbered home in the old town of Strasbourg. What we're looking at looks very German, right? Because this used to be Germany. Um, if you don't know what a half-timbered home is, I just found this very interesting when I first heard it, and I've been telling people ever since. Uh, that white stuff in, in, in the old days used to be like a straw hay mud mix. If you wanted to move, you could punch that out, fold up your timbers, move your house, and, and, and reset it up, and then fill it in again. That was the idea with a half-timbered home. Of course, that's concrete and permanent now. Uh, but very interesting, uh, the Alsatian region. The next day, we're going to visit a great French castle called Hulk Koningsberg. Um, we refer to this as a kind of a Disney-fied castle because it was bombed during World War II. They rebuilt it, not only on the outside, but they decorated the inside with furniture and tapestries and chandeliers. And there's an armor room. There's cannons up top. And this sits up on a high uh, hill overlooking the, the Alsatian Valley and you see little French villages peppering the countryside as far as the eye can see, uh, nestled in all the vineyards. 
And then we're going to go to one of those uh, villages for lunch. This is Rickvere in France. You're like looking at the whole village right here. Um, I, the kids will have great time finding little French restaurants and having great experiences with chocolate crepes. And uh, what's the, what do I always have there? Oh, the quiche Lorraine is incredible that day. Tom, do you have a favorite in Rickvere? What's your favorite lunch? I forget what they call it, but it's basically onion pizza. It's oh, pizza yeah. with onion. I think I forget what they call. It's good. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, great. We're, we love our lunch stop in Rickvere. Uh, and then we're going to visit the um, uh, the great Strasbourg Cathedral. This is one of the largest cathedrals in Europe. Uh, you can't tell it from this picture. And this uh, gentleman here is Jean-Claude Ferry. He's uh, um, the tour guide for the Gold Tour. Um, but ironically, his daughter, which Tom and I have known since she was a, a baby, uh, almost before she could walk. And um, she is actually now going to be a tour guide and she's gonna be the tour guide for the Stars and Stripes tour. And his other daughter, right? Is, is that, is your other, his other daughter is uh, the Freedom Director. So we keep all these, the, these uh, tour guides in the family. Uh, Strasbourg Cathedral is just amazing. And the choir will get a chance to go inside and sing inside as they will most of the cathedrals we visit across Europe. We're going to give a great French concert. Our French audiences are always amazing and enthusiastic. Um, all right, now we're going to be moving from France into Switzerland, and we're going to arrive in Lucerne. Lucerne is uh, in the lake region. It's got this famous uh, wooden bridge. It's got all artwork on it, and uh, it was actually burned down years ago, but they rebuilt it. Uh, and there's also paddle boats on this on this lake. You're going to have a couple hours of great free time here to do shopping and and see the town. It's a very touristy town, uh, but you could do some paddle boating. One of the things that strikes me about Lucerne is the Swiss architecture. Around the lake, the, the churches and the castles and the buildings, and the, there's castle up on, on the hillside, and it's just typically very Swiss. It's going to be very different than anything the kids just saw in France and Germany. And then we're going to be going to Italy and Austria and the Czech Republic, and the uh, architecture is going to continue to be very... Uh, um, in contrast, very diverse, and the Swiss is very, very unique. Uh, we're going to visit the Swiss, uh, this famous lion monument. This was uh, built, carved to commemorate the Swiss Guard at the end of the uh, French Revolution. Uh, that picture does not do it justice. It's in a gigantic, gigantic monument. Uh, like I said, you'll be doing a lot of shopping here. Probably not that shopping, but you will literally see million-dollar Rolexes covered in diamonds. You'll walk past them and go up three flights to the swatch department and uh, see all kinds of swatches that you'd never uh, find here in the United States. Um, inlaid wooden music boxes, Swiss Army knives, hopefully not that Swiss Army knife, uh, but you will, uh, you can get them engraved. That always reminds me that uh, on our last night when we uh, give our final announcements and uh, for our last day of traveling home, we're going to uh, make sure that the kids' souvenirs like Swiss Army knives are packed in their checked luggage so they, they don't get taken away. I always am reminded about those Swiss cards, Tom. You know, those, they're like five bucks. They're very inexpensive, but they're very popular. The kids all get them. It's, it's like a size of a credit card, but they have like 12 different things in them. But they always forget and they leave them in their like purse or their carry-on, their knapsack. Even those need to go in their check luggage so they don't get taken away at the airport. All right, we are now going to climb out of Lucerne about 45 minutes, literally straight up, uh, high into the Alps. Um, and we are going to arrive in this little village called Ingelberg. And this uh, surround, once we get up there, we are surrounded by a 360 degree panoramic view of snow capped mountains. Yeah, this is July. And uh, again, this picture does not do it justice, but that is 360 degrees around us in this little village. That's the village of Ingelberg. Uh, we're going to have a great Swiss dinner. And then we have a wonderful Swiss entertainment with these Alpenhorns. And so we, this, uh, sometimes there's three or four, uh, they come with these horns and they play for us and demonstrate. And then the kids, when they're done, the kids get a chance to actually try them out. And that's a lot of fun and it's fun to get some great blackmail pictures. Um, all right, we're now headed south out of Switzerland, uh, down through the Brenner Pass and into Italy. A um, little bit of a long drive this day, but we are going to break it up with an incredible lunch stop in Lake Como. So uh, this is a very famous, um, maybe you've heard of Lake Como. A lot of famous people live here. Um, who has a house here? Um, uh, who has a house here, Tom? Um, yeah, one of those famous guys. <laughs> I don't know why his name's like, 
Anyway, we are we are actually staying at a spa town outside of Venice called Abana Terme, and um, the next day we're going to take you into Venice. You've got to get there by boat. What you're looking at here on this uh, picture is literally hundreds of islands. Uh, if you didn't know, Venice is built on over 700 islands with over 450 walk bridges that connect connect different islands. And it's really is what you're looking at is a maze of shopping streets. It's very touristy. Uh, we're going to take you down the Grand Canal on a water taxi and drop you off at St. Mark's Square. You're, you're going to see these gondolas and literally you might be in Venice one time in your life. So you're probably going to want to go on a gondola ride with your friends. Uh, we're going to teach the kids actually uh, how to bargain with the gondoliers. You'll say no to the first gondolier. You'll say no to the second gondolier. They're going to start at 150 euro a boat. And you don't want to pay that. You want to try to get them down to 120 or closer to 100 euro a boat. And then here's the, unlike that picture right there, <laughs> our advice is this is not the romantic ride for two. Uh, you're going to pay a lot of money for that boat. So you get the best price you can, and then you go with five or six of your friends, and you split it. So for 20 euro, now you get a chance to go on a gondola ride with your friends. Um, this is St. Mark's Square. This is famous St. Mark's Cathedral, one of the most beautiful and iconic uh, cathedrals in the world. When you go inside there, uh, it entombs St. Mark, but all those domes up top, when you go inside and look up, they're all covered in gold mosaic. And once you've been to St. Mark's Square, you're going to see this in movies for the rest of your life. Like I think every James Bond film has a, a chase sequence that runs through St. Mark's Square and pigeons are flying everywhere, right? Uh, and the pigeons are great here in St. Mark's. You're going to have a fun time there. This is the largest walk bridge in Venice, the famous Rialto Bridge. Uh, you see this in pasta commercials and on spaghetti boxes. Uh, this is uh, arched over um, the Grand Canal. There's some AMA kitties enjoying their gondola ride. They took our advice, Tom. And the famous Bridge of Sighs. Uh, so the story of this is uh, on the left side's the court and on the right side's the jail. And when people were sentenced, they'd be walked across that bridge and they'd look out those little windows and they would sigh at their last view of Venice before going to jail. So the story goes, but everybody stops and takes a picture of it. One of the most photographed spots in Venice. Um, I love this picture. Again, these are my students from Mainland Regional High School in South Jersey. And that picture is about 19 years old. I still use it. It's such an incredible picture. Uh, it was such a good shot. All right. Again, there's Tom Murphy. He is conducting a incredible concert here. And I got to tell you about this concert experience. So we were, what you're looking at is a Bono Terme. This is a spa town outside of Venice. On the right outside the picture is like a piano bar. And on the, on where these lights are is like a walking path, right? And this is about like uh, 10 o'clock, 1030, maybe 11 o'clock at night. Uh, by the way, nothing starts on time in Italy. Time's just not a thing there. Like a nine o'clock concert really starts at like 10, 10. So we were setting up and there was no audience. And the actually the chairs and there's no place for audience to sit either. The f people that you see sitting in this picture were using the leftover chairs that the band wasn't using in our setup. So the choir always started our concerts here and there was nobody there. So what did we do? The band played a Sousa March two and a half minutes that we're going to play in our part of the po program. And I kid you not, in two and a half minutes, 250 people were, were standing there and all ready to watch our concert. So then we told the choir directors, go ahead, start the concert. And the choir went out and they began our concert, 300, 400. Then the band start, did their part of the concert, 500, 600. By the time the choir rejoined the band for that patriotic finale at the end, we had like 700 people, 30 deep, surrounding the band, 360 degrees around, all standing, uh, watching our concert. Um, the other thing to tell you about this, and you can't tell from this picture, but most of these people are in their Sunday best. So the Italian culture is the Italians get dressed up late at night and they just go out for a walk. So like literally 700 people were just out for a walk that night and stopped for our concert. So when I tell you that the musical experience changes their lives, that's what I experienced that night. And that's what all the kids experienced that night. Tom, I'm jealous that you're conducting in that picture. <laughs> All right. I know, who, I know who took the picture, though. I did take the picture. <laughs> um, OK, so we're now leaving the Venice area. Uh, we're headed to Austria. And it's, again, a little bit of a drive that day. And we're going to break it up with another incredible lunch stop at a lake resort called Riva de Garda. And what, this is my favorite place on a lunch stop for on the entire tour. So what a great, beautiful place for a lunch stop. 
And then we're going to be arriving in the Alps in, in Austria. And I guarantee one, one of the two favorite places on their entire trip is going to be Westendorf, Austria. Isn't that gorgeous? So uh, this is a, a ski resort in the wintertime. We're here in the beautiful summer. And the, what you're looking at on the left is actually one of the places that we stay. And on the right is another one of the places we stay. We're actually split up in like five or six of these around town, these pensions, uh, kind of bed and breakfast type places with their own uh, meal rooms. We'll look at that in a moment. That um, little chapel is uh, very quaint. Hopefully the choir will get a chance to sing in there. And that mountain... All the kids are going to go on top of that mountain and have a picnic lunch with the cows. We'll talk more about that in a moment. So this is in the Br Brixenthal Valley. This is in the Tyrolean region of Austria, which is on the western side. And this is literally what this whole area of Austria looks like. It looks like it's like carpeted and green carpet. Um, and while we're there, our first night, we're going to have a Tyrolean folk festival. This uh, Austrian troop comes out, right? They do all the lederhosen slapping and the log chopping. There's a German umpa band uh, backing them up. And uh, it kind of turns into a big dance. Uh, the kids all get in involved with dancing and getting on stage and getting involved in some of the skits. They have all kinds of skits that they perform for us. So much fun. Uh, one of the best nights on the tour. The next day is going to be a free day in Westendorf. So we're here multiple nights. Um, some of the things that you can do on a free day. First of all, those aqua spots in the middle of the picture are large community swimming pools. And so you can go swimming. You can rent bikes. Um, I mean, look at that valley. Can you imagine renting some bikes and, and, and riding around the exploring the valley? You can do some hiking here on the mountain. What If you have experience, you can go horseback riding. But what all the kids do is they go to the supermarket with their friends and they pack a picnic lunch and then they come up this chairlift and have a picnic lunch with the cows and do some uh, uh, hiking after their, their lunch. And I'm not kidding. This is exactly what it looks like. This is a picnic lunch. And I love showing this picture because it reminds me about the roommate thing. So these two girls are from South Jersey from different schools and they did not know each other. Girl on the left was from Cherokee High School and the girl on the right from Point Pleasant Borough High School. And they were going with other students from their school, but they didn't want a room with somebody that they knew. They wanted to meet somebody new. So they decided to just let the computer match them up and they became best of friends. And that was about nine or 10 years ago. And I know that they are still very, very close friends. And uh, I mean, look at that background though, if you've not checked it out, uh, having your picnic lunch uh, overlooking Austria. Again, more kiddies picnic lunch. Uh, we're going to give a great concert. That, by the way, that's the same hall that the Tyrolean Folk Festival was the night before. But after our free day, we're going to give a, a, a wonderful concert in the Alpen Rosen Hall. And Keith, this would be a good spot to talk about um, the theater part. This is one of my favorite venues. And this is exactly why we have the theater group with us this year. Because um, that, that venue, as the other ones, but that one particularly, is going to be great for the theater group. I can't wait. I agree. And so, yeah, one of the, the ideas with the theater group is that it can, their, their 20 minute, 25 minute performance uh, is going to be able to be performed anywhere on a stage, in a cathedral, uh, in a concert hall, uh, any, anywhere we happen to be performing. Many of our concerts are outside. Um, okay. Moving on. Next day, we're going to go to a glass blowing town called Rattenburg. It's on the River Inn. Uh, we'll be treated to all these demonstrations of glass blowing techniques, and they'll usually get a couple students to come up and try it out, and they can keep the glass they blow. Um, this guy's pulling hot and molten glass out of the oven. He starts pulling at it, and like 30 seconds to a minute later, he's got a beautiful glass swan. Um, this is, they'll usher us through the gift shop. This uh, woman is engraving gifts that the kids buy. However, if you buy glass gifts here, you don't want to be carrying these around Europe for a couple weeks. So you want to send those home. It's very easy. They UPS stuff home all the time. Your gifts will be home before, before you are. Um, there's always time for gelati. And then we're going to take the kids to the top of a glacier, 10,000 feet in the Alps. Doesn't this look like the beginning of The Sound of Music? Can you see Julie Andrews? The hills are alive. All right. Won't sing for you. All right. So we're going to put the kids on these gondolas. Now, Keep in mind, just two days before, you were on a gondola in Venice, a different kind of gondola. Now you're on a different kind of gondola. Now you're going to go up the side of an alp. And so here we are at the bottom of the glacier, and you get up to the snow. Yes, this is July. You're going to get off one gondola and get on another. 
and get up above the tree line and get on another gondola and then you'll get up above the clouds and then you'll get on another gondola and then you'll finally be 10,000 feet in the Alps and you'll make some snow angels and have a snowball fight. Uh, the, here are kitties on top of the world. So what I love about this picture is this placard right here. So this, uh, what that says is on a clear day, and by the way, that's not a clear day, but on a clear day, you can see the Alps of five countries. And that plaque points to different peaks where you can see the French Alps, the German Alps, the Swiss Alps, the Austrian Alps, and the Italian Alps, all from this spot at Hindertuchs Glacier in Austria. Amazing, isn't it? Like you're literally looking across Europe. Uh, this, we're going to do a, uh, at the end of our glacier day, we're really going to go right to the foot of the glacier in a little village called Meyerhofen. This is the same venue I showed you at the beginning of the presentation. Um, and we're going to give a great concert. What's great about this venue is when the kids are performing, they're literally looking up at the Alps and the glacier that they were just on that day. Uh, it's a wonderful venue. The next day, we're going to visit the incredible town of Salzburg, Salzburg, Austria. What's Salzburg famous for? Um, lots of things. Churches. First, there's like over 50 churches in Salzburg, and they ring their bells all the time. Not on the hour, like just all the time. And it's world famous. That sound is called the sound of Salzburg. And if you remember, another famous thing Salzburg is famous for is the sound of music. And the beginning of the sound of music, even before the, the picture comes on and the birds start chirping, you hear church bells. That's that famous sound of Salzburg. It's also Mozart's birth house, uh, birthplace, so you can see his birth house. Um, so speaking of the sound of music, this is Mirabelle Gardens. We'll visit Mirabelle. Uh, that fountain right there, the kids were skipping around that when they were singing Do, Re, Mi and trouncing around Salzburg. And they get on the steps and they, you know, the steps where the kids were learning the steps of the scale and they jumped up and down the steps as they sang. The kids all do that. They get on the... And that castle fortress in the, in the far distance... Um, that overlooks the old town and this kids will get a, they're, again, they're going to have a lot of free time in Salzburg, uh, t this day and they can get a chance to go up and visit that castle. If you look on the right side of this picture, there's a little railroad track. It's, it's called a funicula. It's a lift. And that's the, the way to get up to the, the castle. So, um, there's Mozart's birth house. You can go in there and see the, uh, first piano forte that he played. Realize that's like one of the first pianos ever, beginning of the classical time period. Before that, we're using harpsichords. And, um, and that was the development of the piano, right, at Mozart's time there. So the old town of Salzburg has no traffic in it. It's all blocked off from traffic. Again, I very, feel very comfortable taking a large group of high school kids to just have a lot of free time here. In these, you're looking at narrow shopping streets. They'll, they'll be getting lunch and shopping, going up on the castle, visiting Mozart's birth house. We're also going to be met by local tour guides. I think two of them might be standing right there in the uh, foot of that picture. Uh, and we'll be treated to a Sound of Music walking tour around Salzburg. Uh, that's a chocolate store, all Mozart chocolate. So you see that waterway. Everything on this side of the water is the old town. And you're looking at that... Uh, one of the main churches is the, uh, the, in the green roof building right in the center of the picture. That's where Mozart was baptized. You can see his baptismal font there in the back. You're actually looking at the back of the cathedral. The front is uh, uh, from the square to the left of it. Um, anyway, love the old town. This is taken, uh, this picture up on the, uh, by the castle fortress, where we're probably going to be having dinner, I believe, that night, that day, at the Stiegel Keller restaurant. Um, the next day, we're going to be visiting Mathausen Concentration Camp. Um, as we head toward the uh, Czech border. This is a very sobering visit. Um, I know Tom and I are very proud uh, that we have taken thousands and thousands of kids to uh, either Dachau or Mauthausen. Uh, visiting a concentration camp and bearing witness to what happened um, is just an essential part of uh, the experience of our American Music Abroad tours. Uh, yeah, this is an expanse where, where barracks used to be. Um, there are crematoriums. Very, again, very sobering visit. There's always tears. Uh, the, the students have been affected, and uh, it's, um, I know we feel that's a, it's a very important thing. All right, we are now headed to the Czech Republic to one of the most beautiful spots uh, that you will see ever, and that is Chesky Krumlov. This is a lunch stop, and it's right on the Czech border. I mean, look at that. Uh, this is going to be an incredible lunch stop. 
Uh, there is a castle with a moat, and in that castle, there are actually bears. And if you're lucky and they're not hiding from you, you might get a chance to see some of the bears in the moat. Uh, another great picture of Chesky Crumlove. All right, and we are headed across the beautiful Czech countryside and arriving in Prague, uh, one of the most picturesque uh, cities and one of my favorite cities in all of Europe. Um, we are going to go on a boat cruise. I believe it is an evening cruise on this tour. Uh, what you're looking at is actually a daytime picture, but we're going to be taking the same cruise boat uh, in an evening setting, which is wonderful because the sun the setting, uh, incredible sunsets every time I've been in, in Prague. And uh, the city, of course, is get, becoming illuminated, um, as well as the Charles Bridge. Uh, that's the Charles Bridge. Now, that bridge dates back to the Renaissance. That's how old that bridge is. Um, amazing experience. The bridge is covered with uh, statues of saints. There's like 30 statues of saints. Uh, here's the Prague Cathedral. Uh, we'll be doing a walking tour while we're in Prague, which will include visiting the cathedral here. And also Prague Castle. And we'll get a chance to see this famous astronomical clock. So this clock was started in 1410. I'll say that again, 1410. And every hour, a crowd gathers by this clock and watches it go off. It's still working today. Unbelievable. Um, as speaking of Prague sunsets, that's uh, again one of my favorite pictures I've taken in Prague. Uh, we're going to give a concert in Prague in a museum. This is uh, incredible. I've been, I took this picture from six to seven stories up uh, looking down um, on our performance uh, in the Czech Prague Museum. And now we're going to uh, leave the Prague area and head uh, west to the German border and uh, into Germany and arrive in uh, probably this one of the two. I've, I mentioned Westendorf before as some of your most memorable spots, but Dinkelsbühl, Germany may be a rivaled favorite. So uh, this is not Epcot. You're looking at old German village. How old? Every one of these houses is our original 10th century homes. Do you have any idea how old 10th century is, kids? Think about that. That tower in the back, there are 10 of those towers surrounding the town, all connected by a wall and surrounded by a moat. That always reminds me, this is one of the places you have a second free day because it's fully walled and moated. Not, not kidding. That's the wall, that's the moat. Please don't jump in the moat. Um, by the way, there's a great walk. I, I know Tom loves to do this. There's a walking uh, path that goes around the wall uh, that, you can, that you can take and go around the entire uh, town. And that's a, that's a fun thing to do on the free day. But lots of shopping to be done as well. Um, just an incredible town. So this is one of the places that we stay. This is the Golden Rose. Uh, again, we'll be split up in about six or seven of these around town. Um, this is, again, a room for two. Uh, all the furniture is like 100 years old, all hand carved, down comforters and pillows. Again, a private bath and toilet in every room. Here's the meal room downstairs. I know it's a concert night because I see everybody's in their uniform. Um, again, our dinners are all multi-course served sit-down meals. It'll include soup and or salad, um, main course, uh, dessert. It will um, not include your drinks, though, at dinner. So if you want to order a Coke, Fanta Sprite, iced tea, something like that, or even a bottle of water, um, you have to pay for that. And they'll come around with their little change purse afterwards and say you owe for two Cokes and you pay them for your, your drinks. However, I want to point out, if you look at that second table, there's a pitcher that you can see, right? That pitcher of water. There is always tap water on the table at dinner, and that's what you should drink. We highly recommend you drink that and a lot of it because it's how we stay healthy on this trip. We drink more water and we get more sleep. Two key ingredients. Uh, and we wash our hands a lot. Sorry, three key ingredients. And we don't want to get sick on this trip. And it's free. And they'll keep refilling the, uh, the pitchers of water. And so that's what you want to do. And by the way, the bottled water thing, when you order bottled water in Europe, uh, it comes with gas in it because that's the way the Europeans do water. You can get regular water, but you have to specify natural or own a gas and they'll, they'll bring that. But bottled water, you're going to have to pay for it. So shopping, um, this reminds me that Germany is a very Christmas oriented country. Like every village has a Christmas ornament store. So you're looking at a Christmas, Christmas ornament store right there. A lot of people buy Christmas ornaments as souvenirs. Uh, also the nutcrackers, the German nutcrackers, uh, the popular souvenirs. Uh, the German beer steins, very ornately painted with the pewter tops. 
uh, cuckoo clocks. We are in the Black Forest, inlaid wooden music boxes, Birkenstocks. You go to the mall, Birkenstocks are $130, bucks, $35 in Dinkles Buell. That's where they come from. My wife buys three pair a year. Now, how, how many years did I say I've been going? Do the math. <laughs> no, every year, she always buys that Papilio brand with all the different colors and designs, and she's got to have three pair a year. I could, literally, her closet looks like this. See, look at the kids' feet. They're all wearing their Birkenstocks. Also, stuffed animals. Um, and, you know, I want to tell you about one of the, a couple of reasons why this town is so famous um, and, and why it's visited by people around the world. First of all, they have this famous boys' band. All boys in Dinklesby will come through the boys' band. They start, like, at six years old playing drums, and they graduate to woodwind and brass instruments, and they age out at 18. And they've actually traveled the world. They've been in the Olympics in the old Soviet days. They played in the Soviet friendship games. And um, there's also a famous festival called the Kinderzecken. Uh, the Kinderzecken Festival is held in July every year. And the story is, uh, for the, what's really fit, what made this town famous is the story that uh, in the 1620s, when the Swedes came down from the north and were conquering this area of Germany, they were literally camped outside the wall of, of Dinkelsbühel waiting to get ready to attack. And um, the story goes that the Swedish general saw a Dinkelsbühel child and reminded him very much of his own child, children. And he decided he was going to spare Dinkelsbühel and they didn't attack. So the story is that this town has been celebrating the time when the children saved the town since the 1620s. And every year they have this famous festival called the Kinderzecken and people come from all over the world uh, to see it. And the boys' band is a big part of that. There are parades through town like six times a day during the, the week of the festival. So that, and that, there's, a, a, there's one of the parades, and you can see all the, the kids. Everybody's in a part of this. Um, half the people are dressed up as the Swedes. Half the people are dressed up as the Dinklesbühel people. There's literally a Swedish camp outside the wall with pigs on rotisseries and bonfires and teepees. And, oh, it's amazing uh, to see the, the town celebrating their culture and their history. Here's an AMA concert in the town square. If you look at the right side of the picture, you can see the golden rose I just showed you, one of the, uh, the places that we actually stay. Uh, the, the green building right in front of you is, is uh, another one of the places that we've stayed. And the next day we're going to visit Rotenburg, Rotenburg Altaber. It's on the Romantic Road. Both of these towns, Dinkelsbühel is as well. This is on the Romantic Road area of Germany. Uh, get very very similar in, in old German style, uh, but much, much larger and a great place to do some more souvenir shopping. Uh, speaking of Christmas ornament stores, that's another Christmas ornament store right there. Um, okay, I love showing this because this is like a tour and review to give you a snapshot. We're starting in Frankfurt, up in upper left-hand corner. We're coming down the Rhine through the Alsatian region, Strasbourg and Colmar, France, into Switzerland to... Uh, uh, Lucerne and Ingelberg, then down to Lake Como and across to Venice. Then we're going to come back up uh, to um, Riva de Garda and up into uh, Austria and staying in that Austria area for a while in, in Westendorf and see the glacier and uh, then go to Salzburg and make our way to the Czech border and up to Prague and then cross the Prague border uh, into Germany again, past Nuremberg and to Dinkelsbühel. And then we'll be leaving back out of Frankfurt. So we're making a big circle and hitting six countries in just under three weeks. Okay, I've already introduced you to Tom and I, and Tom introduced himself. So uh, let me introduce you to some of the other members of the staff. Uh, from Nashville, Tennessee, we have uh, Frank Zimmer, one of our band directors. Uh, also his wife, Jen Zimmer from Nashville. And also from the Nashville area, Justin Scott, another high school band director. And from Louisiana, Scotty Walker from Lafayette, Louisiana. And we have another uh, band director from Georgia. I don't have uh, confirmed yet or a picture there, but there'll be another uh, band director joining us from Georgia. Speaking of Georgia, one of our choir directors, Carl Culkin, and, uh, and also from Atlanta, Georgia, Melody White. And also from the Georgia areas, from Conyers, Georgia, Lene Rose. And our host tonight, actually, Miss Jessica Bailey from Fort Mitchell, Kentucky, and um, our, she's our musical theater director, as, long, as well as Lene Rose. And 
In addition to our staff, we also have a um, registered nurse and a school counselor that will be uh, joining us. I have our, our nurse right now is uh, set to go from Atlanta. I just don't have her picture there. These are some of our uh, coach drivers from the past and, and uh, other staff members from past tours. So our inclusions. Everything I've talked about tonight is included in the in the tour. I want to recap real quick: uh, the three-day pre-orientation at Atlanta, the round-trip air uh, flights, um, including the airline taxes, taxes, sorry, and fuel surcharges, transportation via motor coach through the whole itinerary, transference to airports, arrangements for concerts, including uh, advertising, hall rental fees, transfer to concerts, transportation of instruments, accommodations in excellent quality hotels with a multiple occupancy with a private bath and toilet, breakfast and multi-course di dinner daily, the services of our English-speaking escort and nurses through the land portion, all tips, taxes, you're not going to be dealing with any of that from hotels or restaurants. Um, the guided Rhine River boat cruise, the guided tour of, of Konigsberg Castle, the round boat trip in and out of Venice, the Tyrolean Folk Festival, uh, the cable car ride up the glacier in Austria, the guided tour of Salzburg, the self-guided tour of Mathausen concentration camp, the guided sightseeing tour of Prague, the cruise on the Volta River in Prague, the uh, guided walking tour of Dinkelsbühl. There is a basic student uh, travel protection plan insurance that's included in the price of the tour. Well, I'll show you that in one second. Also, American Music Abroad Polish shirt, passport pouch, blazer patch, and bin. And American Music Abroad travel tips, newsletters, information, materials. So I want to talk about that for a second. If you decide to go on this tour, um, starting in, uh, in January, you're going to start to receive newsletters in your email, both participants and parents, every month until we go. So um, you're probably not going to be, you, remember the 40,000 kids that have gone to Europe? Think about every question that a parent has ever had about sending their kid on this trip. Um, one of the things I think this company has done an incredible job at is they've listened to those questions. They've answered them in the form of these newsletters. And uh, it'll be like six, eight pages. Um, and it will, you're not probably not going to be interested in every single detail in January, February. Please print them out, punch three holes and put them in a binder. I guarantee when you are packing in, in early June, uh, you're going to want to know every detail that's in those newsletters. All right. I'm not going to read this to you, but I'll just leave it on the slide here. This is the basic uh, level of travel protection. There is also additional insurance that is offered that you can purchase additionally, but this basic level is included in the price of the tour. Tom, while they're reading this, if you want to put in the chat that link to the digital newsletter, perfect. Um, let's talk about what's not included. Uniforms. So the guy's uniform uh, is gray slacks, black shoes and socks, white shirt. I usually bring uh, three white colored button down shirts and then a red or blue pattern tie, any kind of red or blue pattern tie, and then a navy blue blazer. And then the, they'll send you the patch and the pin and everybody will look great. You saw some, from some of the pictures, uh, the, the ladies are wearing navy blue slacks, black or blue closed toed low heeled shoes. Why low heels? It's because of the cobblestones. Heels and cobblestones don't mix. I don't want any twisted ankles. Um, white blouse and a flag red blazer. Where are you going to get a flag red blazer? The newsletters. So in January, you're going. There will be literally three or four online companies that we know carry the the, the red blazer, and uh, you can order the red blazer online. Okay, passports. You're not going very far without a passport. Costs about 120 bucks. You get your pictures taken. You fill out your forms. You send it in. In about seven or eight weeks, you get your passport. You want to get started on that uh, right away. The only thing you really need money for on the trip is your lunches um, or beverages at evening meals. But you're going to drink water. water. Okay, good. You can go, Tom. Um, the other thing is a homebound bus from the Atlanta airport. So when we get back to Atlanta, that's when the tour is over. You're welcome to go to Atlanta and pick up your son or daughter. Uh, some of you coming from states away, it's probably not a great idea. We're going to probably set up homebound buses to go to Nashville and to uh, Louisiana and some different uh, uh, areas where people are coming from and, and have drop-off points. So, you know, it might be 80, 90, 100 bucks or whatever for a homebound bus, uh, but it'll probably cost you a lot more to, to go to Atlanta to do that. All right. Uh, money, survival money. We say that you should have about $450 survival money. That'll cover your, your lunches and drinks at evening meals and small uh, souvenirs. 
I encourage kids to do the, you know, the collectible thing, like pins, patches, stickers, pens, something you can get everywhere you go. It's, you know, it's a fun thing to do, do the collectible thing. Uh, and it fits in your suitcase. Anything that doesn't fit in your suitcase, like the cuckoo clock, uh, you have to send home. We don't have room for 150 cuckoo clocks. All right. Um, shopping list. How do you know how much extra money to spend? There is literally going to be a shopping list in your newsletter uh, that talks about typical souvenirs that... Um, uh, kids buy in France and Germany and Italy and approximate prices so you can uh, figure out how much extra spending money you want to um, send with your, your children. Uh, so ways to bring money. Euros. Please just don't show up with American cash. It's not going to do you any good. So when we get off the, the, the flight in Frankfurt and we pull into a little village and we, we stop for lunch, your very first lunch, and you go with your friends to find lunch, uh, you want to have euros on you. I, I go to T, I use TD Bank and I go and I, I order the, the amount that of euros that I need and they say three days and they call me and they say your money's in and I go pick it up. It's literally that easy. And everybody should have a Visa card. Um, I, 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 I guess I got to change this slide, Tom. It says with PIN. Are we even using PINs anymore? I think I got to take that off of there. Now I think we have chips, right? Jessica's rolling her eyes. <laughs> It's been all there a long time. All right, so it's but it's very important that the students have a, a piece of plastic and euros, okay? So student safety, this is what I wanna go over with you, why I really feel uh, so comfortable and confident in, in taking students to Europe. First of all, there's rules and regulations. You're gonna sign paperwork that say that you abide by the rules and regulations of American Music Abroad. Um, we only take the best kids. We go to schools where we know they have good music departments, where, we, and we ask the directors to um, recommend their students to go. In fact, all students need a director recommendation for these tours. Um, otherwise, they won't be going. We have a chaperone ratio of 10 to 1. So if we have 150 people on the tour. We'll have 15 adult chaperones. That does not include our escort and drivers, but it does include our nurses and spouses and um, adult chaperones. We have a three-tier discipline policy. So basically, you screw up, we're going to yell at you, right? we, we got to be mom or dad while we're over there, uh, and hopefully we don't have any more problems. If peep the same person were to screw up again, we will probably have to make a collect. There's it goes to go again, Tom. Are we making collect phone calls anymore? We're not. No more right? collect. We are going to make It's going to be really call. easy to contact Tom. Now. Yeah, but we're going to use your phone, and we're going to call home, and we're going to be talking to mom, mom and dad and... Uh, I'm going to let you explain why we're calling home and then we're going to have some tiers and we won't have any more problems. The third, the third tier is that we, uh, if you do anything illegal, stealing drugs, you're going to have signed paperwork staying that we can send you home at the uh, nearest airport um, at your parents' expense. And I guarantee a one-way ticket home will cost more than whole trip costs. So uh, we won't have any of those problems. The itinerary, literally the itinerary is an hour by, the final itinerary is hour by hour breakdown of the morning, afternoon, evening of everything we're doing for literally three weeks. The parents will all have a copy. The kids are going to have a copy, probably download to their devices. But we are going to actually require that the kids carry the paper copy of the itinerary on their bodies at all times. They'll fold it in thirds and in thirds and they'll put it with their passport in their passport pouch around their neck and under their clothing and wear it for three weeks. And we're literally gonna check it six to seven times a day. So, oh, that reminds me, we can account for everybody on this tour in 30 seconds. So every time we meet, we split by coach and we have a count system and we go one, two, ready, go. One, two, three, four, five, six, right? And in, and in 30 seconds, we can account for everybody. When we do that, we check passports and itineraries. Every time we get on the buses, we check passports and itineraries. Every time we have bed checks, we check passports and itineraries. You're gonna get home and show mom and dad your passport and itinerary, because it's time for the check. So listen, the most important part of this uh, tour and experience is your safety. Tom and I need to know that you are safe. So when we do bed checks, the expectation is that you are in your rooms from bed check to breakfast, and then we know you're safe. If you're out of your room after bed check, you're in a foreign country with foreign locals, you're just not safe, all right? And that may have to uh, be a phone call if, if that were to happen. So, uh, again, I, this is another thing a lot of parents like. Um, every evening is accounted for on this trip. So we basically have a concert every other night on the trip. 
But the nights in between, we have these planned group activities like a disco dance in Strasbourg or an evening walking tour in Dinkelsbühel. The folkloric entertainment, uh, Tyrolean Folk Festival, right, in Austria. Uh, the Spa Town Walking Tour in Albano Terme in Italy. So anyway, fun, really fun things that we all do as a group, and um, we, we love that. So packing real quick, one 35-pound suitcase, that's not a lot. You know, most airlines say it's 150-pound bag per traveler, but you have to remember how much equipment we're bringing. You know how much tubas and Barry Saxes weigh and percussion equipment. Um, we have to account for a lot of the weight of the equipment we're bringing. Also, one, um, but let me say this, how are you going to pack 35 pounds? For 44 years, 40,000 kids have done it. So you'll do it. You're going to read the newsletters. In the newsletters, they're going to tell you exactly how to pack, how many underwear, how many shirts, right? How many shoes to bring. You're not bringing seven pairs of shoes. Uh, you're, let's talk about laundry for a second. Do you think we take 150 kids into a German laundromat with funny money and instructions in German? No. So what are you going to do? You're going to bring a little bottle of laundry detergent. And when we tell you, you're going to fill your sink with hot water and you're going to wash your clothes. Now, why wouldn't we tell you? Because it's going to be on the first night where we're staying multiple nights. Why? So it dries. This is actually a really critical and serious thing. The last thing you want to do is put damp clothes in your suitcase under a hot coach on the way to the next country. It will contaminate everything in your suitcase. You can't wash it out. You're going to have to throw your clothes away. And nobody's going to want to sit next to you on a bus when you smell like mildew. Right? It's, it's a really serious So Staff and students, for three weeks, we have to really manage that laundry thing perfectly. All right, some additional items. If you'd like to go, there's no audition. However, you do need a director recommendation. Um, but we also need to know how you play. Uh, we need to know, do we put you on first clarinet and give you a solo, or do we put you on third clarinet? So we, by, by January 15th, we're going, and the newsletters are going to tell you exactly what to play and how to do this, but you're going to submit, um, it's actually going to be a video, not an MP3, I got to change that. Um, but you're going to be submitting online a video of you playing, and we'll be evaluating those just for seating. Um, I am going to skip the reading session because we're probably going to do that via Zoom because we're coming from so many different locations. So we'll talk about that uh, at a later date. Uh, I already talked about the newsletters and, and printing them out and putting them in a binder. And Tom is going to put in a link right now in the chat um, to some fundraising suggestions that we've used in the past. Um, also, in addition, our, our company is, is also uh, doing some new fundraisers. Um, one they just came out with a few weeks ago and that we will catch everybody up on and get you a link to doing that. Um, some, some ways to help you, you raise some money. But I can say this, I always have a handful of kids on, on my tour every year who have raised every cent of the tour. Um, so the tour costs, the Stars and Stripes tour costs $5,599. That's a lot of money. Um, but it's really not a lot of money for three weeks in Europe and everything that we do and everything I went over. If you were to try to do what, what I just described to you, it would cost you twice that much money. So uh, if you look at the link that Tom put in the chat, uh, that, that was our digital uh, brochure, you will see this itinerary um, outlined on the second page for you after the, the cover. And then there's all kinds of uh, I, uh, lawyer talk and, and other additional information about the company uh, for your information. The, on, the application process is online. So there's a QR code on the, um, on the, on the front of that digital brochure. Uh, that you can scan that to, to apply. Uh, Tom, I believe there's also going to be an email sent uh, tonight um, for the people who sign into this meeting. Uh, and in that will also be a link to, to signing up. No passport number is needed. You don't want that to hold up your application. So you want to submit that. And in like seven or eight weeks when you get your uh, passport, you can always let us know. Um, you, you'll actually be making a scan, a scan of your, your uh, picture page of your passport. There is a 250 non-refundable deposit, but we are also past the November de uh, 15th uh, payment of 250, right, Tom? So I believe 500. At this point, 500 is the uh, deposit that's needed now. Uh, the, I'll, I'll tell you what the the um, payment schedule is on the next slide, uh, and then you will be getting some automated uh, reminders two, four, six days out. Um, uh, you know, just letting you know that uh, 
if you have any questions to let us know and giving you some reminders about signing up. Our tour is probably about 65% full, I believe, at this point. Um, if we don't hear from you in a week to 10 days, we'll probably be making some follow-up phone calls and uh, getting in touch with you. We let, uh, ask that you let us know either way. Uh, if you're not going, that's fine. We just want to update our records uh, so we don't keep bugging you. And we expect the Stars and Stripes tour to be filled by, by Christmas. Um, the payment schedule is spread out from now through uh, May. I actually see a typo on there. Um, no, actually, it's not a typo. It's correct. So there's the uh, 250 application, then 250 by November 13th, and then 500 due in December 30th. It's been, I think it's been moved to the 30th. And then on February 1st, 1,000 is due. March 1st, 1,000 is due. April 1st, 1,000. And then the balance is due on April 21st. Okay, so from now through April 21st, it's all spread out for you. The company website's AmericanMusicAbroad.com, and that's the general website for uh, all eight tours that are traveling to Europe in 2023. So you're going to receive an email tonight with staff bios, and um, actually, you got it already. It's that it's the link that Tom put in the chat, all that company information, application information. I am going to end with a, a video, and let me stop sharing for a second, and then I'll take any questions that anybody has. Share. And during the video, feel free to put them in the chat. Any questions you might have. Um, that's the wrong one. Sorry. This one. All right, there's always questions. 